Welcome back to Mugler Playground. Today I'm going to show you what you need and how to set up a simple distillation system. When distillating, the first thing you need to decide on is your tool of choice. You can use a Bunsen burner, a heating mantle, or a hot plate. Now, what I like about the hot plate is that it's incredibly versatile, much more than the Bunsen burner, and much cheaper than the heating mantle. Also, it doesn't require a gas line, or it doesn't, it's not accustomed to one sort of boiling flask, which a heating mantle is. Additionally, it comes with a stirring bar, a stirring setting, right? It can go up to 2000 RPM, and its heat can go up to 716 degrees Fahrenheit. To put that into perspective, it can melt sodium hydroxide and boil glycerol. That's why I suggest you use the hot plate for any sort of distillations. Now, to make your hot plate more like a heating mantle, it is important to use a sand dish. Now, the reason why I prefer sand over oil bath and water bath is because both, first of all, water's boiling point is only 100 degrees Celsius. So you can't do high heat distillations with it. Also, oil tends to fume and steam and burn, and not to mention it can get bubbly. So you really don't want to use an oil bath. That's why a sand bath is preferable. It insulates heat, it can retain, and it will allow your uh, reaction flask to cool down slower because if your reaction flask cools down too fast, it could possibly break and explode. The next thing that's most important is your reaction vessels. Now, I'm going with a one liter boiling flask and a half liter boiling flask. And the reason for that is I like to distill in bulk. I'm not the type of guy who's gonna do little baby amounts with 50 milliliters, boiling it into a 25 milliliter flask. This guy, I need stuff in bulk and I need it fast. Also, the reason why I chose the flat bottom versus the round bottom for this one is because you can also do simple evaporations with it and it's stir bar compatible. A stir bar would struggle to swirl around in this because of its round bottom. Also, it can be good for storage if you don't have a large container to store stuff or other chemicals. Maybe you just want it to sit around. That's why you should use a flat bottom flask. The next thing you'll need is a still head. As your reaction proceeds, the product will vaporize and travel up through here and into the condenser. This is very important, but what's even more important is a thermometer. You need this so you know what temperature your product is coming in at. You might be able to get a side product or you might get tar or something else that is undesirable. You need to have this, that way you know what product is coming in because your product is represented by its boiling point. And if you know the boiling point of your product, you'll know if you're getting it. Following our path of distillation, the next thing you'll need is a condenser. Now this is probably the most one of the most important pieces of equipment you need outside of your flasks because this allows your vapor to condense into a liquid which will have your actual product in it. But also you can use it as a reflux. Now this is good to low to mid heat refluxes. For high heat refluxes you'd want something longer, perhaps filled with glass wool or steel wool. But of course a condenser is meaningless without a water pump. Now this shoots 200 gallons per hour. That is more than enough speed for the cool water to flow into the condenser and pull out the heat, which will allow your product to condense fast and for long periods of time. Because as the water runs through it, the product that's being vaporized, that's in the condenser, it's going to heat up the water and your condenser will run at a lower efficiency. That's why you'd want a fast pump to pull out the heat from the reaction as fast as possible. That way your product will not be lost to vaporization. Finally, you need a still receiver. As your vapor, or now your liquid product, gets to the end of its journey, it is important to have this piece. You never want to cover this unless, you unless you're plugging in a vacuum line or a gas trap. Otherwise, your reaction will build up from pressure and it may explode and you don't want that happening. We cannot forget mineral oil. This is very important to grease the joints of your distillation apparatus. If not, your stuff would just be falling apart or you might have little air pockets that would cause your product to escape and you don't want that. That's why it's very important to use mineral oil whenever you're about to do a distillation. All in all, your distillation setup should look something like this.
I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it very informative. And always remember to be prudent over what you do and make. Always wear PPE at all times because every chemical, no matter how harmless it may seem, can hurt you. So it is very important to protect yourself. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video if you found this informative and helpful. And I'll see you in the next video.